to the 1882 Mechanical Restoration Project. Uh, what I'd like to do today is, uh, well, first of all, I have a confession to make. I did a really dumb thing. In the last video, you saw us finally get the engine running pretty well. We addressed some of the issues like the loose head bolts, um, the uh, just stanky fuel and bad fuel filters, basic tune-up stuff, change oil. At the end of the last video, it ran pretty well, and I was super excited about it. And I might have been a little too excited because the following day, off camera, I decided to do a couple hour runoff on the engine just to see how it would do at wide open throttle for, you know, an hour or two. So I put some fuel in it, uh, topped off the oil, and I came back about an hour and a half. I could hear it from the inside of that, from the house. I could hear it humming away. It was, it was running great. And uh, it started approaching the two hour mark, so I came outside, and I came to the shop, and there was a plume of of oil mist all over the place. I didn't tighten down this cap right here. I didn't screw it down and snug it that final, you know, eighth of a turn just to snug it. And it rattled itself loose, popped off, was laying on the top of the case, and there was oil all over the shop. Um, when I came out here, it was still running at wide open throttle. It had the low oil pressure light on, the oil sentry light was on, so it had to have you know, three to five PSI or less of oil pressure. Uh, so I freaked out, I put some oil in it, I cleaned it up, ran it for an hour or so yesterday off camera, everything seems okay. What I'd like to do in this video, uh, now that the confession's out of the way, yeah, I did a dumb thing. Uh, what I'd like to do is install uh, an oil pressure gauge, uh, temporarily in place of the sending unit that's currently in there. Just to see what kind of oil pressure the engine has, get a better idea of the internals, especially after you know the mishap. And uh, for peace of mind and probably for final installation, I would like to put in an oil pressure gauge. So uh, that's what we'll do in this video, um, and it should be pretty simple stuff. So I'll bring you along for the process. So here is the right-hand side of the Mag 18. Here's the cooler or the uh, filter lines coming in. And that's the filter. Uh, return send and return block there Here's the oil sentry sending unit that sets the light on on the dash uh, And we are going to install in its place just temporarily an oil pressure gauge so we can actually see what's happening as far as the engine pressure goes Engine oil pressure goes so uh, I grabbed a 26 millimeter which is not correct for this I'm sure Um but it does fit, needs a real thin wall to fit in between here and there. I could have grabbed it with a pair of vice grips, which is typically kind of the easiest thing to do, but there's just not enough room in here to show you guys uh, what's happening. So we're going to pull the old one out. I already took the connector off. It's a little tricky. Now this way you don't booger them up either. If you can capture them that way, that's the way to do it. Okay. I was guessing 8th NPT, that's what it looks like. So, let me show you what I have here. The Harbor Freight Special Triple Gauge Kit. Pretty sweet. 18 bucks gives you an ammeter, uh, an oil pressure gauge, uh, I think it's 0 to 60 PSI, and then a water temp gauge too. And I don't know what I'm going to do with the water temp gauge. I'm definitely not going to throw it away. I have some stupid ideas for it, so we'll see what happens. I've already went ahead and prepped the, uh, the 8th NPT fitting here. I got a little bit of pipe thread sealing on it. I'm just going to screw it down in there. Maybe. Where's the old threads? There. Now you can see it. A little brass fitting. And we got a 7 16 hex on it. 
pipe thread going into the loom. You don't want to you don't want to snug it too much, just enough to seal it up. Uh, if everything looks good here, what I'll do is I'll put a T in here and put the original sending unit back on there. Again, trying to keep the tractor as original as possible. The one thing that I'm going to say is that I will probably cut into the dash. I want to keep it original as original as possible, but I I don't want to operate a, a pressurized lubrication engine without knowing what the actual pressure is. There's a lot of real estate on these dashes. It looks like it would be pretty easy to do, so I'll probably end up doing that. Here is the oil pressure gauge, 0 to 80, looks like. So I've already snugged it on the back side here. It's already been snugged up against the compression fitting there. And since we're just temporarily doing this just to see what happens, I'll just take a little section out of here and run it straight in. This tube is just notoriously difficult to work with. Okay, so get in there. Now we got to snug that up. 5 sixteenths? Yeah, it's 5 sixteenths. On all these connections, you don't want to uh, you don't want to over tighten them. You're just trying to snug it up so it doesn't leak. So just be easy with it. Uh, keep it out of the exhaust. Maybe bring it over here, and, uh, man, I really want to keep it away from the head, honestly. Let me rotate that a little bit, or keep it away from the block, because that's a lot of heat right there. Yeah, we'll, just, we'll turn it this way. Let's see if I can hold the line from moving. It was pretty snug. Uh, we won't know if we have any leaks till we start it, but yeah, I don't know if you can see the gauge there. Yeah, okay. So let's uh, let's crank it and see what we get. Maybe. going to take a while for the oil to reach the sender, so. We're almost there. It's starting to build a little bit. It's already got 20 pounds of air pressure. If you look on the back of the line, it hasn't even, see where it's darker and then where it's clear? It hasn't even gone all the way down it yet. All right, let's give it a little choke. Coming down a little bit. I'm gonna burp this thing and see if I can get it. Oh, there it goes. It's starting to drain back. Okay. Well, it's got flow out, so it should be. We should be good. I'll try it again. The 40 is not bad. I would. I would like to see 
closer to 60 when it's cold, but... Yeah, the brakes don't work either. So I'm going to crack the end of this and see if I can get it to bleed a little bit. It looks like there's still a lot of air in the line, and it doesn't look like it's reading very consistently on the gauge. So I'm going to crack it open and see if I can get a little air out of it. Okay, well, the fitting's gone out there. Let's see if I can at least get some oil out of the line, because I haven't even seen it go all the way up to the gauge yet. Let's try that again. And I'll wait until it comes out of the fitting here, and then we'll... figure out what was going on with that pressure gauge it was acting pretty erratic right out of the gate so I cut the video and played around with it for a little bit and it started coming back to life a little bit on the tractor but what I was seeing is that it, the, the pressure never really dropped very low like there was no low end of the scale it was 40 psi and then at wide open throttle it was 60 and then it, it never really varied and I figured with an engine with this many hours there's no way it's putting you know, 40 PSI at idle, barely idling. Um, so I brought it over to the compressor here and turned my regulator uh, to whatever value I wanted to see on the gauge just to confirm that it actually, the gauge can actually read at that low of a resolution. You know, I was concerned that it was reading 40 PSI and really it, it was, you know, 20 or something. You can't. You can never trust anything, especially. And I hate to say this, but you know, you get what you pay for. And I was just raving about it being an eighteen dollar gauge set from Harbor Freight. So, uh, so I did just bring it over to the compressor, and sure enough, it does read all the way down to the end of the range and all the way back up. So we'll reinstall it. But I just wanted to show you. Uh, let's see if I can get you in here. 
Uh, you won't be able to see the compressor's gauge, I don't think. Yeah, the regulated pressure's on this side here. But anyway, here's, uh, so I have the compressor set for, I have the compressor set for about 20 PSI. So, let's see what we get. Kind of hard to hold. There's, there's 20 PSI right there. As close to it as you're going to get between two regulators, so, or between a regulator and a gauge in the plumbing. And then it goes back down, and I can probably bring it down even further than that if I wanted to. I don't know if I can, what's that? Mm, no, maybe not, let's see. So that should be about 10. Let's see if it'll read it's 10. Yep, about halfway between the 0 and the 20. Alright, let's try the high end. We'll try 60. I'm hoping the compressor doesn't kick on while I'm doing this. We'll see. Okay, so that's about 60. 60 should be the high end of the scale there. Yeah, 65, 70 just about, give or take. So it can build the full range. It can read the low resolution and the high resolution. You can even see the tube on the inside of the gauge there. See the tube back behind the light? It moves. So I just wanted to confirm I wasn't, you know, playing around with a jacked up part and being, you know, trusting some metric that was just completely out of whack. So... Now that we've confirmed that the gauge can actually, you know, show the full range of pressure, I mean, air is a fluid, the same as oil is a fluid, less compressible, but still. Um, now we'll hook this back up and see what we get. That's, uh, yeah, that's a real low idle, too. There's really not much. RPM there. Yeah, it's still cold. It's, I mean, that's a really good pressure for a lovely idol like that. So we're looking pretty good. It's got a real strong, uh, real strong oil pressure, even at low RPMs, which is a really good indication that the pump uh, is in good shape and the internal clearances are pretty tight, um, and not too tight either because it doesn't really overpressurize. So I think that's good. I'm going to let it sit here and run and really warm up, and uh, then we'll move on to draining and. Uh, do a drain and fill and filter on the rear end.